Hello everyone and welcome to this month's synth tutorial with computer music and this month we're going to be using our very own Yuhi Zebra CM plugin again to create a fantastic metallic keys patch. So let's kick things off by loading a copy of your favourite door and make sure you load up an instance of the Zebra CM plugin on an instrument channel. We're working in Logic today but you can use any door you like. We're going to begin the process of creating our own patch by doing an initialize so we go to the plugin window go to the upper display at the top of the window, click with the mouse and come down to the bottom of the menu where it says init which stands for initialize. You should now hear a sound a little bit like this. To create the metallic effect for our keyboard sound today we're going to use both oscillators but producing some quite complex waveforms. So let's begin with oscillator number one. Moving over to oscillator one on the far left hand side we go to the center of the oscillator one console where we have a picture of the waveform. By clicking on that waveform, we can then drag the mouse upwards and we're looking at the top of the display on the plugin so that we get a value of 5.20. As you can see, the waveform we now have selected is relatively complex and not like any of the more usual subtractive waveforms that we're more familiar with. We're now going to perform a very similar process on oscillator 2. So moving over to the second oscillator, do the same process again, but this time we're setting a waveform which will appear on the upper display of 12.40. Now part of the sound that we're going to create is going to give us a little bit of movement, and we're going to generate some of that movement by varying the waveform that we have on oscillator 2. So in order to make this happen, we're going to go below the waveform display, we're going to look at the pot that has wave written above it, and we're going to assign from the drop-down envelope 2. What this means is envelope 2 will shortly be sending a signal in the direction of the waveform itself. However, we have to indicate an amount of modulation and on this occasion we're going to use a negative value. So click on the pot itself, drag the mouse down and set it to a value of minus 1.60. Currently we're only hearing oscillator 1, so when we play a sound we're only hearing oscillator 1 in play. The reason for that is plain and simple, we just haven't turned the volume up on the second oscillator yet. Because both oscillators are going to be in play, it's going to be quite loud, so what we're going to do is make some adjustments to the volume on the oscillators and also the master global volume as well. So let's start with oscillator 1. We're going to drag that down to a value of around about 90. We're going to move to oscillator 2 and the volume control for that and we're going to drag that up to around about 96 so you can see it's a little bit more generous than oscillator 1. And because we have both oscillators in play and it's going to be quite loud, go to the bottom right hand side of the plugin and you'll see that there is a master control volume there. We're going to set that to around about the 3 o'clock mark. It'll just take the edge off the volume and give us a little bit more headroom to play with. You should now hear a sound like this. Next we're going to pan the oscillators slightly. So you'll notice that on each oscillator there is an independent pan control for the oscillator. So moving to oscillator 1 and where we have the pan control below, we're going to set that to a value of minus 20. We're going to do the same process on oscillator 2, except we're going to make it a plus 20 value. So in other words, the oscillators will be panned slightly to the left and slightly to the right and it'll give us a slightly thicker texture when we hear the sound in play. The sound we're creating today could be described as being a little bit akin to an acoustic or an electric piano sound. Consequently, we need to make some alterations to the envelope controls so that we mimic that kind of behavior. So let's go to envelope 1 first of all. Envelope 1 is the envelope that's controlling the volume of our sound. So we're going to make some subtle changes here. So we have three pots to change within envelope 1. Let's begin with the decay pot. First of all, let's click and hold on that and let's set it to a value of around about 72. That's quite a generous value, but it will mimic the kind of slow decay that we have with a piano. We need to eliminate all levels of sustain. So moving to the sustain pot, click and hold and drag it all the way down so that we have a value of zero. And then finally, go to the release pot that's in envelope one and set that to a value of 28. Envelope 2 is going to be used as a modulation source. Consequently, we need to make some subtle alterations to Envelope 2 as well. So let's move to Envelope 2 and similar process, let's go to the Decay Pot and let's change that to 66. Next we're going to go to the Sustain Pot and we're going to take that all the way down to zero again because we don't want any sustain there. 
and then finally go to the release pot and set that to 15. This now means that when you play your sound, Envelope 2 is moving in the direction of Oscillator 2 and it's changing the waveform in real time. Consequently, you can hear some movement in the sound. Now let's turn our attention to the filter. Moving over to the filter section, which is the top right hand side, we quite like the filter which is labelled LP, which stands for Low Pass Vintage. So from the drop down, select that. And then moving to the cutoff and resonance pots, we're going to set our cutoff control to a value of 98. And we're going to set our resonance control just a little bit to a value of 17. It'll just give a little bit of a whisper. Once again, we're going to use Envelope 2 to do some modulating within the filter section. You can see that there is already a pot which is pre-assigned to Envelope 2 here. So what we're going to do here is drag this pot up to a value of 138. Quite a high value for this one. It now means that when you play, you should hear some modulation occurring in the filter as well. That's all the patchwork done on our sound, so we now have a sound that sounds like this. It's a pretty aggressive sound and it can be really effective in a number of different settings. It will also benefit from a few little production details. Don't forget to add a little bit of compression. We're using the onboard compressor from Logic here and we've got it set as a Studio VCA compressor. It'll just help keep those levels under control. And then finally, if you want to add a little bit more colour, you can always add a little bit of tape delay. We've got our Logic tape delay here, and every time we play a chord, we'll get an effect like this. That concludes our tutorial for today, so do have fun with that patch, and let us know how you get on.